let the life, let the life within us testify. Let the life within us cry out. It means that the life of God inside of us has a voice. It's a living thing. He's saying that that life should speak. He's saying that that life should gain ascendancy. He's saying that life should dominate. It's not by the life just crying like a child. No. When the life begins to possess and do what it is supposed to do, then the life is speaking, it is crying out. So let's pray in the Holy Ghost for a couple of minutes. Let's activate, let's be conscious of the life of God that we have. This is a season to possess eternal life. This is a season where eternal life must not be a struggle. This is a season where eternal life, you know, John 3, 16, must no longer be a memory verse. It must become our living reality. For God's all of the world, and He gave His only begotten Son, that we shall have begotten Him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Must no longer be a scripture we quote to sinners, a scripture we just quote, you know, especially when we call evangelism. No, we will, we must possess that scripture. We must begin to say that if the word of God says we shall not be dead in him, shall not perish, then I cannot perish. Then nothing is permitted to perish in my life. So my body, my cells, my, my brain, my organs, my finances, my children, the things that have to do with my life are not permitted to perish. John 3, 16, this is what I speak. They are spirit and they are life. There is a spirit behind John 3, 16. So we are going to engage it. We are going to engage eternal life. Eternal life is a living reality. Eternal life is the life of God. Eternal life is the life of divinity. And if God possesses eternal life and God is the way he is, how come we say we have eternal life and we are not like God? Because it is the life of God inside of us that should configure us. It is the life of God inside of us that should dictate the way we live our life. Should set the place. So if I say I have eternal life, it is not by me declaring to people that you know I have eternal life. No. By the way I see, I saw you 10 years ago, and now I'm seeing you, and you're looking younger, I'm seeing that you have more strength, I'm seeing more of life, I'm not seeing more of death, and you get I know of the truth that you possess eternal life. You know, one of the inheritances that we have is eternal life, you possess it, you told the children of Israel, I've given you the land, but you possess it, you contend for it, you take it, you possess it. In praying in tongues, just listening to me, I'll be praying in the Holy Ghost, we are laying hold on eternal life, we are possessing Possessing the eternal life, we are going to that gate and we are saying, Give us this mountain. We are saying, Christ paid for this mountain and we are taking delivery of it. Eternal life becomes our reality in the mighty name of Jesus. The river of God will second and we possess a by faith. Make Every part of our being and our suso goloso badege is swallowed up by eternal life. 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 Eternal life is our reality. Father, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, on Sunday, uh, by the time we're done with Easter celebration and all of that, even though it was a good thing, I logged on to Facebook and I was listening to a person in a sport. And he said something, he was talking about immortality. And he said, This is this not something I can exhaust here. But now when we are talking of eternal, uh, eternal life or immortality, we are not just talking of that we will not die, which is the end. But a part of immortality, part of what we are possessing, part of what we are saying, is that this life of God in us now, there is a work it is supposed to do. Do you understand? The life of God in us is supposed to, every day we wake up, eternal life should be working in our system, in our bodies. It's not just we
we have a camera right there. We are saying, okay, wait, when I get to 18, no, no. Even right now, at 20, at 15, at 35, at 45, at 55, at whatever age you are, that eternal life can work powerfully and mightily in you, praise the Lord. So we are those that are going to possess it. Yes, we have it, because scripture says in 1 John chapter 5, 10 to 12, that we have eternal life, but we are going to possess. It's a different thing when the thing has become yours. You are not saying in your mind, okay, I have, no, 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 you possess it. Can we pray in tongues for one minute? As you are praying in the spirit, just see yourself taking a hold of life, possessing life. Yes, it took this pandemic to push us into the reality of Christ. We are possessed. Say, bless be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of the heavens and the earth. Possessor of the heavens and the earth. Possess, if I say I possess Abuja, it, it means something. It means that every everything there, I can use any part of the land because it is mine. So when he says, Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of the heavens and the earth. If God possesses the heavens and the earth, the Bible said we are heirs of God and we are joint heirs with Christ. So part of what we inherited in Christ is the heavens and the earth, hallelujah. We possess it by faith. We possess eternal life in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory hallelujah. to God. We pray in tongues for like two minutes. You know, the word of God is sweet. When God quickens his word, when you are just praying or just uh, meditating and you are receiving revelation, it makes God's word sweet, and that's why I smile. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that God possessor of the heavens and the earth. A couple of days back, I was praying here, and I was just lying on the floor. And the Lord came to me and said, Possess the earth territory. God has forced us to step into that territory and give us way. Can we possess with this understanding of possess that gift? We break our bones again. We can do both of the car. We can do both of the car. We break the roots of the car. We break the roots of the car. We break the roots of the car. The heavens belong to God. The earth He has given to the sons of men. We declare the airspace over the earth that it has been given to men. So we possess it. Oh, as heirs of God, possessor of the heavens and the earth, we possess that day. We possess that territory. Hey, shall to go to see We declare Jesus is Lord. Over the airwaves, they come on, don't see ya. Get me super, they get the boss here. In Acts chapter 2, he said, No, assure me that this same Jesus that you have crucified, that God has made him both Lord and Christ, both Lord and Christ. There's a dimension of Christ that is called Lordship. And today we, we effect and we exact the dominion of Christ over the airwaves like never before. We possess it for Christ. We take, we possess it, we take uh, by the oppression of the Spirit of God, by the oppression of angelic beings. Uh, he said, who makes his angels wind? Uh, by wind beings, we take possession of yes. the wind. Uh, we take possession of the air. Uh, yes. We release angels that are wind beings. Uh, and by their oppression, we take possession yes. of that territory. Oh, Isaiah and our gates shall be open continually. We declare that the air gates are opened over the church Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. There will not be short day or night. There will not be short day or Amen. night. There will not be short day or night. Amen. We command spirits that are in charge of those realms to bow to the Lordship of Jesus Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We try voice, which is the voice of Christ, uh, to the ends of the earth, to the east, the west, the north, and the 
going to be looking at faith. For those of us that are streaming online, I know beyond the shadow of doubt that you will be blessed. You know, there's a scripture that says, he, he defines a season that we are in, and then he asks the question. He said, in this season, what manner of men ought we to be? And then if you read that in that verse down, you will see that he's saying that the kind of men that we ought to be are men of faith. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying that in every season, there's a requirement. There are things that God requires of us in a season. So the children of Issachar were men that understood times and seasons, and they knew what their brethren were supposed to do, and they did it, and their brethren were at their command. So it's not enough for you to just understand the times and seasons. You must understand what is required in the season. For example, there was a time that all that was required of the children of Israel was for them to wake up every morning, carry their, their kneading bowls or whatever bowls they have, and just step outside, and they will find manna, and then they will carry it back. Now, in that season, God gave prescription, gave, God gave instruction. He said, carry only what you and your household can eat in a day, and don't be greedy, don't leave it till tomorrow. So some persons left it till the morning, and by morning they saw that worms were coming out of the manor. Because the prescription for that day is that you just get your daily bread, you just get your daily um, uh, food. And all that is required of you is for you to just get a bowl. You don't need to do any work, just wake up in the morning, go out there. The, the wind of God has blown in the quails. You just step out and you pick your quails and you carry your bowls and you pick your manna. But you see, they stepped into another day. After 40 years, they stepped into another day. And the Bible said, immediately they tasted of the corn of the land that the manna ceased. Ah, that's a rude awakening. He, he was saying that no longer will you just lie in bed and wake up in the morning and carry your bowl. You know, I, I can imagine these people that for 40 years they've not, they've not done any farm work. They don't even know what farm work is. They don't know anything about generating their own food. They just wake up, take food, prepare it, take food, breath, 40 solid years. And then this morning they wake up and the mother tells the son, okay, go outside and, and get manna. And she steps out and there is no manna. Oh, I want you to see the shock. Survival mode is quickly activated. How are we going to survive? What are we going to do? How do we navigate this thing? So we have been saying that we have stepped into the day of the Lord. We are saying that it is also the evil day. You understand the parable of the wheat and the tares. And we are saying that in this season, there are certain tools that are required of us. So these children of Israel, all of a sudden, they realize that what is needed in this season is not a bowl. What they need is hoe. What they need is plow. What they need is digger. What they need is ability for them to plant. That was what was required. So if the person that is, is, is gets up, you know, like before, and carries the bowl to step into this new day, that person will die of hunger. In every new day, there is something that the Lord requires of us. And we must give attention to what heaven is demanding of us. In the season that we are in, you know, it is sad to say that there's so much of God's words that goes out. But oftentimes, in fact, most of the time, what plays out is the parable of the sower. We hear the word of God. For some of us, as we are hearing it, as we are listening to me, the birds of the air are already picking it. Some of us get excited. Wow. But we don't have depth. You don't have depth. It's not an issue. Go and develop depth. There's a place where you develop depth. Some of us, tons. All we are saying right now, all we are thinking is, I don't want to hear this word. Hey, what will I eat? What will my children eat? What will happen by the time this coronavirus thing is over? What will happen to my business and all of that? The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of preaching, the problems of this world. The Bible says they spring up and what do they do? They choke the word of God, making it ineffective. So there are things that can make God's word as powerful as God's word is to be effective. The Bible said that by your tradition, Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees, you have made God's word ineffective. The problem is not with the word of God. The word of God is always powerful. 
But we must know how to respond to the word of God. We must know how to react, to interact with God's word. So that we receive not just 30, not just 60, but there is 100 fold. I don't see why any one of us will choose to have 30 fold and choose to have 60 fold when 100 fold is available to us. So in this season that we are in, what is heaven demanding of us? What is heaven asking of us? One of the things that heaven is demanding from us is faith. Hallelujah. We, this is the time for faith to not be a slogan. Oh, you know, I know Kenneth Hagin, I've read his book, and hey, hey, show me you have read Hagin by your faith. By what you are using your faith to accomplish, by what you are putting out your faith for. Hallelujah. So the Bible says in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, we're looking at faith, Romans 1, 17. It says, for daring is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Permit me to say that the just will die without faith. You live by faith, you die without faith. So faith in this season is a necessary spiritual tool. And in all you are doing, make sure you pick up faith. As a matter of fact, Ephesians 6 tells us that you quench the fiery dart of the wicked by the shield of faith. All darts can be quenched. All can be quenched by faith. It is our responsibility. The just lives by faith and the just dies without faith. So I was just in my spirit looking at this word and meditating this morning and the Lord began to teach me more on faith and he said, look at that scripture again. If I say the just shall live by faith, I am saying that the just live by the word because I told you in Matthew 4, 4 that man shall live by what? The word of God. Not by bread alone, but by word of God. Of God. So if I say that the just live by faith, indirectly I'm telling you that the just will live by the word. Yesterday morning I was just doing one or two things and also meditating, putting God's word in my heart while I was doing what I was doing. And the Lord began to speak to me and he drew my attention to the word he gave me. On my, he gave me before my birthday. I actually asked the Lord to give me a birthday present. And the Lord gave me Matthew 4.4. 4. He said, that's my gift to you. Matthew 4.4 4 is what I just quoted. Man lives by the word of God. You know, and I've studied it. I've looked at it. I've said a lot of things. But yesterday, the Lord just came to me in a very quiet, subtle way. And he said, you know that scripture I told you. He said, what I was trying to tell you is that the bills of your ministry will be paid by the word of God. Your food on your table will be come from this word. Your health is the word. That's, he was just showing me everything I do. <laughs> oh, you need to get a new camera for the ministry. So by the time you finish pointing you, he has left. You now determine if you want to be hungry. Because if he's telling you that your bills, you know, coincidentally, someone sent me a message this morning and she said she came for one of our last meetings before this lockdown and uh, she was trying to describe herself, but I cannot remember her. And what she said, so so person brought her, and she said she saw that the long and short of it was that she saw me, I can't remember the context now, and I gave her an envelope and when she opened the envelope, she saw money inside. Then she closed it and behind it was a scripture. She was trying to look at the scripture, she didn't get it and she woke up. So Ma, what does it mean? Simply put, the money will come by the word. The scripture outside is what will bring the money inside. And I gave her Philippians 4, 19. But there are other verses. That is what God is saying. That in this season, instead of, you know, having panic attacks, how are we going to survive? And in each one of us, we're spending so much staying at home. With the beautiful situation in Nigeria, there's total lockdown without light. So you are only fuel, you know what it takes. The weather is hot. At night, you need to run your gen for you to be able to sleep properly. Then, because of the way the society is, immediately they say, 
lockdown, the crisis of food, everything escalated. So you are paying times two, times three for the things that you would have paid less for. And seemingly, as it were, it's like you are not working. So you are taking more out than more that is coming. I say seemingly because that is not our reality. We don't accept it. Yeah. Even when the enemy is showing you that, you know, you just spent 10K today. Do you know you spent 20K today? Do you know you say, yes, 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 more, more than this is entering? You, that is the warfare. The warfare is not here. The warfare is when you are when you are taking the money, when that starts where it hits you, when the, you know there's no light for 12 hours and you you bought how many thousand uh, fuel, tomorrow you are buying around, and while you are buying, the enemy is saying, hey, hey, if this thing continues for one month, hey, 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 he's talking to you, you talk back at him at one month, 40 years they were sustained. Yeah. If God could sustain them 40 years and the economy did not deplete. Then there's another reality we must log on to. Yeah. Not this reality. Yeah. Oh, this season has forced me into yes, believe on the word of God. Yeah. I believe God's word like never before. I just know that it is well. Yeah. I just know that money will enter my account. Yeah. I just know that God will supply my needs. Yeah. I just know that at the end of this season, I will be bigger and better. Where is that confidence coming from? From the word of God. So he said the just shall live by faith. Now Romans 10, 17 says, And faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word. In case you don't understand what I'm doing, I'm linking God's word and faith. I'm saying the just lives by faith. And I'm saying living by faith is living by the word. Now scriptures have told us in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, that if you want faith, Great faith, small faith, medium sized faith, apple sized faith, macro sized faith, mustard sized faith, no matter the size of the faith, all, all of faith is rooted in God's word. He said, Faith cometh. Faith cometh. So that you don't have faith is not an issue. And as a matter of fact, as long as you are a Christian, there is nothing like I don't have faith. Because scripture says God has dealt to every one of us a measure. So we all have a certain measure of faith. But we have a responsibility to train, uh, train ourselves and build our faith and grow our faith so that our faith comes up higher. So faith coming by hearing, faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith does not come by hearing God's word. No, faith comes by hearing. Faith pops open your ears in the spirit. And your ears in the spirit opens by God's word. So every time God's word comes to you, what God's word does, first of all, the first miracle is that it opens your hearing. Once your hearing has been opened, then things can begin to come into your life. No more guy in Ezekiel 37, he told him, and speak to the dry bones, and he said, oh ye dry bones, hear ye. The first thing he said was for the dry bones to hear. You can't be transformed unless you hear Transformation comes by hearing. So at times you will actually think you have read something. But you listen to that thing. This was a word I said God gave me January 29th, before January 29th. Now it is making more sense. I'm sure in another three months' time, by the time God breaks on the word again, I will see that, okay, I thought I understood it. No, he's saying something else. So at times you really assume that you know God's word, or you have heard God's word, but you really have not heard it. So you need to know tapes that you have this season, go over them, go over them, over and over and over, until from your spirit, you just see that, you know, it is popping up. Now there's a song I heard, really, I don't know where I heard the song, I'm assuming it's Christ Center that our, our, our fire people sang it one of those times. That's what I'm assuming, but really I can't remember. It's something like, you're too faithful to fail me. I don't know the beginning of that song. I don't know the end of that song. But for almost a week, I would just wake up and I'll hear my spirit. You are too faithful to disappoint me. That part, that those two lines will just say that. So I thought about it. I think God is telling me that, look, I am faithful. Wow. Judge me wow. faithful. Do you understand? Yeah. I don't know where, I don't know how many times I listen to it, but I'm saying that when you give attention to God's word, at the time where you need it, it will just pop up in your spirit. The word of God will just pop up, and you know that this is the word for the season. So the just live by faith, and living by faith is simply living by 
the word of God. So how does this faith operate? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 as I try to just type one or two things. Hebrews 11. Glory to God. I have been tremendously blessed. I hope you are blessed. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. We can't exhaust faith. So probably next week, I'll just continue on this teaching on faith. Uh, for by it, the elders obtained a good report. I love this one. The elders did not obtain a bad report. Oh, if the elders were here during COVID-19, what would be their report? Who through faith subdued COVID-19? Who through faith stopped the quarantine. Apostle Lawa sent me a clip of uh, Annie McPherson. There was a particular city she was built to and um, minister. And while she was on her way, you know those days transportation is not as fast as she, they told her that that city had, that, that there was a flu a pandemic that was killing people and the city had been quarantined. And she said, before I get there, the quarantine before she got there, the flu had stopped. The pandemic stopped. The city was full of water. What flu? And he sent the picture. This one I'm just looking at. It was staring things in my heart. Staring things in my heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So they, they obtained, in Africa, we say that an person obtained was a good report by faith. They obtained a good report by faith. And the Bible says, through faith we understand that the words were made by the word of God. This is really what I want to emphasize and close with, that the words were made by the word of God. Now, there's a popular phrase I've been hearing since COVID-19 started. I don't know if people have heard it. I don't know if those online have heard it. Or probably that is, that is they are even the ones generating it. But this is the phrase I've been hearing. By the time this COVID-19 is over, the world will not remember the same. By the time COVID-19 is over, the world will not remain the same. I've heard that a lot. And then I'm telling myself, okay, yes, sir. The world will not remain the same. But when people say the world will not remain the same, what are they saying? It's negativity. They are telling me that at the end of this day, huh, by the time I meet a brother or I meet a sister and I want to say good, something in my head says good social distance. Good. That's one. And you can, I don't want to stay here, there's no time. You can just think of all. So this morning when the Lord popped up the scripture in my spirit, I said, okay. So by the word, he said the words were made by the word of God. So I'm going to frame my word. I'm not going to wait for the word. I'm not going to wait for COVID-19 to determine the kind of world I believe in. To, to tell me who to talk to, who not to talk to, and whatever. Yes, while we are respecting the laws, while we are obeying uh, government orders and all of that, by the time this lockdown and everything is over, I'm, I'm the just and I'm going to be living in the consciousness that I dwell in Christ. I will live by faith. I will live by the word of God. I will not be scared of touching anybody because scripture says I should lay hands on the sick. Hallelujah. So I expect that anybody I touch, whether you carry COVID-19 or any sickness, that it will no longer be healing service where, you know, we call people to heal them. But that beginning from now, anybody I shake, anyone I touch, I'm intentional in my touch, that the power of God will flow through me. Jesus Christ, you know, organized special meetings. He would just be walking on the street and the Bible would say it was noise abroad that he is here. And so instances, the Bible said they will begin to beg on him. Please, can we just touch your shirt? No, you know, I begin to wonder, did Jesus Christ pray and say, as I'm entering this city, let there be revival. Okay, this is my clothes. I put it in the presence of God for 40 days, soaked it for power. No, no, no. He was just going to visit his friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha on his his way, somebody stops and touches him and gets home. The power was always there. So I go to the market to buy, and somebody just says, Ah, does not even know I'm a pastor, or knows I'm a pastor, and touches me, and ah, something happens. Mm. Hallelujah. We have heard that level of testimony in the life of um, um, the servant of God, uh, Adiboye. How he went to a certain supermarket abroad 
and a, a white man shook him or so. They, of course, they didn't know that he was a man of God. And immediately he passed. An infirmity he had lifted. He knew. He went back. He said, excuse me, who are you? Who are you? And people around so that knew him, of course, he was of things. Like, something happened to me right like now. The man took me that something yeah. left. Immediately I shook this person. No, I think he did not enter there yeah. and say the five hour time. Mm -hmm. That is that is where they are pushing us to. Yes, you know, the same way persecution forced the church mm -hmm. to carry it outside. So we are going outside, we are telling the tomato say that you are touching it, you are you are or the bus driver, whoever he is, whether you touch the person or the person touches you by mistake, yeah. he said we are the rock, you fall on it or it falls yeah. on you. Anyhow, there is always virtue that should flow yes, from us. So we become conscious that we carry God. Yes, we lay hands, we touch, we release life. We are not conscious that, hey, you know, after this, uh, I'm touching. See, I'm reversing that. Because after this lockdown, that's what we don't know who is carrying. They say some people are carrying, so don't want to come out for death because of stigma, whatever, whatever. So uh, let's uh, we are out, but everybody stays safe, everybody stays safe, which is good according to your faith. Yes. But according to my faith, if you touch me by mistake, the power of God flows yes, and causes your body to be healed. And if I touch intentionally, I am touching you based on Mark 16 and uh, 15 that, that says I should lay hands on the sea. The Bible says one of the doctrines we receive is the doctrines of the laying on of hands. It yeah. took the elders time to contend for that word to come to the church. And right now the enemy wants to steal it from us. But we are saying no. We will lay hands on the sick wow. and they will recover. The sickness will not enter our body. Our life will enter their body. Nobody has a monopoly of transfusing yes, death. Yes, yes. Oh, we say no. no. So instead of your death to enter my body, my life, my life. My life. We, end, we overshadow you. My life will yes. enter your body. We gain ascendancy. That's the world I choose to operate in. That's the yeah. world I choose. So, right now, while you are at home, it is not just you speak it. Yes. You yes. speak it. Or oh, after COVID 19, as I go out, as I sit in that again, as I talk, you know, they said it is transmitted by word. Yes. By speaking, Rasta Toxic, every breath. It's the power of yes. God. As I speak out, whatever it is I talk, even if the person is using mass, there is no distance in my spirit. The breath of the Almighty from me hits you with life. You live and you are wondering that, oh, there's something breathing disorder. A lot of his are are walking. Because God breathed into us. So my breath does not carry death. Oh, no, 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 it carries life. That is the God of the Spirit. It's the Spirit. And the Spirit is wind. It's wind. It's wind. So every time I breathe, yes, consciously or unconsciously, we breathe in mm -hmm. and we breathe out. I'm breathing out the wind of God. Ah, the Holy Ghost, say God is light. And mm -hmm. in Him is no darkness. There's no death in God. So I can't be breathing out the Holy Ghost ah, and we can't be dead. No, 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 no. We change the cosmos by the yeah. word of God. Change your world. Frame your world. Obtain a good report by God's word. Be like Abraham. I'm going to continue next week on faith by God's grace. Call the things that are not. How do you operate, exercise this faith? The Bible said, you know, I was looking at that scripture. I've, I've looked at it before, but today I looked at it and looked at it and I said, God, wait, are you really telling me what you are saying? That I can create my world? Yes, ma'am. I can create my world? <laughs> oh, I can create my world. Do you know the impact of that statement? Yes! That some of you are saying you face me, I face you. And God is saying that that duplex you want to stay, by faith you can create it. Yes. God is saying that estate, that every time you pass and you say, oh, this estate is for the rich, how I wish I can stay here, that you can create it. And one of my daughters in the Lord, she, you know, she told me that, when I went to visit her at Abuja, she stayed in a beautiful uh, apartment, and she does evangelical. She told me that, look, that when she she came here and she saw this message, she told God, God, if you give me, give us a house here, I will minister to all the gate men in this in this essay. And God, I was just like, well, this is this one form. It was just by faith. We just believed God, and that was how we're able to get this apartment. 
And right now, God reminded me, she's doing evangelism some days back to school. She said she just went to minister. She's going around all the gateway in the estates and she's preaching Christ to them. Yeah. Faith. Faith. Don't see. You don't pay for faith. Mm. So drink faith. Pick it. Some of us cannot even imagine I will drive that car. Immediately you think it will shut down. Do you, you know some of those systems mm -hmm. or phone concepts that immediately you just put something that is heavy, it just goes down. That's what's happened to some of us. We don't have shock as well as we've not stayed in the word of God. Immediately you just think five minutes. No. You sit down. I'm not going to tell you the things because I'm online, I've been creating. Or I'm imagining first. I'm not in a, in a hurry to speak. And I'm saying, well, I'll thank God for this season. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the exercises you said in the team. I told myself that as I'm going, I'll be intentional in this 30 minutes work, 30 minutes of speaking God's word. Mm -hmm. Speaking God's word. Intentionally. Creating, what do I want to create? And then things that people can be taught the word of God, have a Bible school, have be the less privileged. In fact, skill up is just like a whole lot of things. And no government is going to give me that money. Mm. And I don't know if there's anybody that is going to dash me that money. But mm. it's in the world. Yeah. It's in the world. Mm. By the time I have stayed on the, the word of God. <laughs> Apostle Joshua Selman said something that, that I danced. He said, Stop looking for the human beings that want to give you the money. Mm. He said, Things are controlled in the spirit realm. He said, Deal with the spirit there. Allow God to determine the human factor. God can use anybody, can use uncle, can use rat, can use donkey, can use goat, can use stick. Can cause it to appear, that should not be your business. But that this thing, that's what see, what really got to me. Let me let me let me read that scripture and end with it. I've read it before. He said, We understand by faith that the words were framed by the word of God. See, he says, so that the things which are seen yeah, we are not made yeah. of things which do appear. Smart. Mm. Smart. This shifted me to me. The things which are seen, we are not made of things that are seen or things that appear. So this table is not made by a visible thing. It's telling that everything that is visible is a product of an invisible substance. There is a substance that is not seen, that is invisible. So he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, while we look not at the things that are seen, but we look at the things that are not seen, it means that there, there is something that is not seen, that is invisible, but is tangible. Oh, oh Jesus. Yes. I'm trying to communicate something. That the fact that it is invisible does not mean that it is not real. This is a wrong word, but I want to use it. It is realer. Yes, ma'am. I don't want to use more real. No, no. Do not be carrying me. It's realer than real. Do you understand? It is that. So I now looked at it and said, the words were framed by the word of God. So in my notes, I wrote, the words one way, word of God here. The words, the words, there's an S to that mm. words, were That's made by the word of God. Words made by the word of God. Then he said, the things which are seen. So the words now are the things that are seen. So I took things that are seen and put it under mm -hmm. words. Were made of things that do not appear. Things that do not appear. I put it on that word. Yes. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Just have a table to be your mind. The words. 
W O R L D S worlds were made by the word of God. So it is this thing here that results in this. So I put words here, W O R D, and I put words here, W O R L D S. So it is words that make words. So under the same breath, now he's saying that the things that appear, so words are the things that appear. Because words, we have the star, the moon, the sun, the table, the chair, the car, the fan. They are under what? Words. So they are the things that appear. So things that appear under what? Words. The things that do not appear is under what? Word. So when he's saying that the things that appear are made of the things that do not appear, what does it mean? That this one is made by the word. The word, you can't see the word. The word does not appear. You just speak it. But you see, <laughs> Job said, who knows the pillars of the earth to sustain it? Who knows the, where God set the pillar that the world is, is standing and something is holding it? What is that power that is holding the earth is rotating and revolving at the same time? And that means that there is a point that my head is under. Yes. 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 And there is a point that my head is beside me. Another time it is. Another time it is. But there is no day that you, you felt it that I'm now under one round. No. So all these things are held by an invisible force. Scientists call it centrifugal and centripetal forces. But those things, those things are just named. It's the, the Bible says he upholds all things by the word of his power, not the of his word. There is the word of God that has power. No. The word of his power. There's a dimension of God that sustains everything. So when he said, and the word became, it is that dimension that holds everything. Now he's telling you that realm is tangible. By that realm, create that iPhone if that is your problem. Create that car if that is your latest need. Create that business. Create the anointing. Oh, listen to me. The crowd in the ministry creates them by the word of God. Whatever it is that you tell words, our words are different. For some of us, our word is admission. For some of us, it's school fees. For some of us, our word is that last next exam. You know that medical exam, that particular one they do in the year or so. That is the word. Now stand here by the word. Get with the creator. That is the prophetic. You know, we, we, we understand the prophetic dimension of God said no, but there's a dimension of the create of the prophetic that is creational. Yes. You take God's word, shall this bone live? Yes. And you begin to speak to the dry bones, hear the word of God, receive life, yes. come into this, come into that. And every day you are right. That was what he did with Abraham. He said, Abraham, get up, change your name. Your name is not Abraham. It is Abraham, meaning father of nation. So you get up every day, look at the stars. You are prophesying it. Yeah. You are calling it. We don't know the number of times. The sound of the seashores. He carries them. And Abraham looks at it and he said, Children. Mm. Two years. Two years. Twenty-five years. It doesn't look like it's a reality. Ah, he he carries the sound. And he said, God said, and the Bible said, and Abraham was fully persuaded. He got to the so today, the Bible said in Genesis 24, 1, Abraham is the head of the world. That there is no gates in this world you want to enter. You can't pass, you must pass through Abraham. He's a gatekeeper. He inherited the world. That title was not given to anybody, only Abraham. He inherited the world by faith. He possessed the world. He, 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 he walked against circumstances. God gave him a promise when his manhood was functional, when his body was intact. God allowed him body to die. Yes. So that you be my faith. Yes. Because if you are just hiding now, it was a miracle here. Mm -hmm. But every day, he's watching. A lot of his sudden, Sarah has passed many of us. 
And Abraham entered purple force. Mm. Oh, men enter purple Oh, she's a man. Pause in that area. Woman, pause in that area. But he stood. He stood. He stood. He stood. Staggered not. Coming. Staggering not. Pass away. God told me, say, your problem is you are not passing. If you are passing, you call it today. Yes, you call it tomorrow. Yes, you call it next tomorrow. Even when it looks like it's not there, mm -hmm. your, your persuasion makes you insist. Mm -hmm. You keep calling because you are persuaded. Ah. You stop calling because you are not persuaded. Right. You are not sure that God's mm -hmm. word can create it. I'm not sure that God can give me that car. I'm not sure God can give me that business. At 500 million, God can give me 500 million. 500 million, I live, I don't die. Hallelujah. It's that you just shut down like, oh God, you can't give me 500 million. But when you are passing and you stay there and you begin to create it, create it, create it, create it, the more you speak it, the more you speak it, the more you speak it, it looks like nothing is happening. It's the kingdom of God. You speak, you wait, you speak, you wait, you speak, you wait. You, you, you are calling life to your body. It looks as if the more I'm saying that I am not barren, I am, I am, uh, my, my children are around my table, the more my period is flowing, the more, no, no, stay with it, stay with yeah. it, keep saying it, keep saying it, the word of God grows yeah. mightily, so as you are saying it, it is growing, it is growing, it is growing, it is growing, it's, it's like a level, put it in the list, and gradually, it begins to grow. It begins to grow. And one day, just that the dough is filled with the yeast. That's what happens with God's word. It is not usually visible. When the seed goes under the earth, it is not visible. Yeah. There's an invisible operation of the word of God. It is not visible to the eyes. When I'm in my bedroom speaking God's word, or when I'm pacing in the, in the compound, or standing outside the balcony, and I'm speaking the word of God, nobody sees me. Nobody knows the intensity. Nobody knows the depth. Nobody knows the prayer point. Nobody knows anything. And then one day they just see you on national TV. Mm. And they say, where did she come from? No, 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 no. There was an invisible water. An oppression in the backside of the desert. Of the word of God. He begins to hit things, clap out, push things, and all of a sudden, he aligns things. See, God's word is so intense that you, don't, you can't even yeah, calculate it. Nice. So God says, a virgin shall conceive. That's what God says. Instantly, the word goes into action and begins to hover around the yeah. yeah. looking for. We don't know if the word appears to many people and they say, God forbid. Mm -hmm. Mm. It appeared to yes, one person. Mm. And she said, Really? Be to me. Oh. First work. Then, for this word to be fulfilled, the wise men that must come from the east. We don't know where that is, is to get married. We don't know the distance. Yeah. Whether it was camels we were using, whether they were trekking, whether horses, donkeys, whatever the means of transportation and time. So, for this wise man, to be there at the point where they were needed. Maybe three months before, mm. the wise men have moved. Why the wise men are moving? There's a word that went forth for census. This one moved. The other one moves. Now, Mary is just in her house, but she doesn't know that this word that she carries mm. is what is causing yes, wise men to come from this. Mm. Herod to issue something. Elizabeth to become pregnant. Mm. So I'm saying that yes. the word of God, you might not be aware, yes. but as you are speaking it in your bedroom, yes. is pulling yes. an investor from an yes. yes. city, yes. pulling somebody from somewhere, yes. and at the right at that time yes. that you really yes. need it, yes. somebody just appears. It's not that day that it happened. Yes. 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 The day is cool, and you begin to speak the word. Yes. The word grows mightily and prevails. Yes, ma.
Now, so you told us, and when you seek first your kingdom and his righteousness, other things will be added. Use my time in seven minutes. I don't have as much time. I need to read for the next three hours. I need to read. I didn't know anything about time expansion or whatever. I just said, God, make these three hours. Let the Holy Ghost teach me and all of that. And I will sit down and I will see that my understanding is at an increased level. At other times, I will just have, I didn't know the prophetic uh, uh, experiences. I will just have a voice telling me, read this chapter, one, two, five, three, leave the rest. When I enter the example, that is what we play out. At other times, I'll just sit down and I'm reading, and I'll just, a question will just come, I'll write it, I'll answer it, I'll write it, I'll answer it, I'll write it, I'll enter it. I'll step into an example, I'll see that those five questions I wrote and answered were the questions that the uh, examiner said. How do you explain that? The power of the word. That was how I came out as the best graduate student at Master's and in the graduate By engaging. This one, you can engage. There's life in you. There's healing in the world. There's strength in the world. Your fish that is carrying your boat is inside. When I say, how do I pay my tax? He said, go to the river. Carry the fish. It's inside the world. Jesus, and they hit their increase 